of the Birmingham Association of Realtors and uh, one of my favorite past colleagues that um, I've always loved to work with. And uh, of course, good morning to you too, Gusty. Hey, good morning. How are you? Good morning. We're so happy to have David here because um, David, we need you. We need your leadership right now. I mean, we're going through so much stuff and uh, you always have a level head to get through any crisis. So, um, you know, tell us, you know, what, what's your perspective? What are you seeing out there? Well, I think one of the interesting things that we're seeing is that uh, I, I was telling the group the other day that, that, uh, you know, one, I didn't realize that, that the state of Alabama had a monsoon season and apparently we did. It started in January. So, you know, things, so that kind of you know, slow things up. We've had more rain than we can deal with. And then all of a sudden now we get a virus. So we've been, so we've had rain. Now we're sick and we're going to get through the other, the other side of it. But the interesting thing is, is that our market in, especially in the metro area has reacted quite well. Uh, you know, we've had we've had some people come off market. We've had a ton of people come on market. But the interesting part of it is, is, the, is that our realtor members, our real estate professionals are the ones that are adapting and they're adapting rather quickly to to what needs to be done. And they're they're being very responsible. Now, it's taken a little while to get to the responsible side of it. I mean, we you know, everybody's going to push an envelope when they can. <laughs> True. But, but we we all realize that based on some hard work of a group of, of, a, of a, you know, of a group of people, we're, we're getting to that point where, uh, where we're, we're, we're moving in the direction we need to go in. I mean, when we started this, when this all started back in the first of March, when all the first declarations came down, uh, real estate was never considered to be an, in, a, an essential service, which I, which I found interesting. The mortgage companies were, the title companies were, the attorneys were, uh, the surveyors were everyone was considered an essential service except for those who s basically started the transaction, <laughs> which was quite interesting. But over time, we have now been designated as essential services. So, um, well, and I'm sure, can we talk about that for just a second? I'm sure, sure that came from you know leaders like you and from our RPAC and you know people who are um, you know fighting for us to be um, essential. Is that true? Yeah, well, yes. I mean, it started. It starts. Uh, if you look at if you look at the world, there's uh, we refer to it in the in the association world here lately is, is a three lane highway. You have the local world, then you have the uh, the state side, and then you have the uh, the national side. Well, all three work independent but jointly. So what happens is, is on the national level, when the, when Homeland Security put out their essential list, we weren't on it. So the National Association got to work immediately on making sure that real estate became part of that essential list. And so then what occurred was after that, the uh, on the state level, uh, our state association has been in contact with our legislators in Montgomery and things of that nature and, and working on it from the state level. Then locally, our local association, Birmingham Association, has been working daily to ensure that we remain essential through uh, through everything that's going on. I mean, we've uh, anytime something comes up that's going to impact us, we we have a great governmental affairs uh, uh, VP, uh, a guy named Will Baylor, who is working tremendously hard with with our local elected officials to ensure that the real estate industry remains essential, which it does. I mean, if you think about it, Dollar for dollar, the real estate industry contributes so much more impact wise to the metro area because, you know, the, the right. saying is for every house that's sold, there are 10 jobs. And so if you think about it, the houses aren't moving, then there's jobs not being created or not jobs being fulfilled. And so that's why we do that. And yes, you know, uh, I actually uh, made the statement the other day and I, I was going to wait till after this was all over with, but it's actually true. Uh, the, you know, you talk about our pack, the, uh, the, the realtors, uh, political action committee, you know, this is our pack at work, right? This is what your, our you know, uh, your, your, our pack donations do is, is, is help us communicate with, uh, with our elected officials, and our decision makers. So yes, I mean, it is definitely, uh, a change of environment as far as that goes, but we are, we, we strive daily to make sure that the, that the, that the membership, the, the realtors, real estate professionals, and especially in the Birmingham metro area and the nine counties 
that our MLS serve. That's that's kind of like job. I have job one, which is to run my company. Then I have job one A, which is to make sure that we keep this 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 five thousand member machine moving in the direction it needs to go, and that's to protect this industry and the members in it. Well, and if every anybody ever wonders, you know, why why should I donate to our pack? Um, why is it important? Um, it, this is why for times exactly like this. This is exactly why, um, so that we can actually keep uh, uh, having the right to help our buyers and sellers. Well, exactly. I mean, it's and you know when you start talking about it from from all the different angles, and you take that thirty thousand foot view, which is a national view. Had we not had a strong presence in Washington, you would not have members being able to apply for SBA loans on a local level because historically independent contractors are that outside norm that is, is you, you're, is, they, they say as an independent contractor, you're never unemployed, but you're never employed. And then you also have the, uh, you know, you're the outlier. And so this is one of the rarities and probably the first time I know of where, where independent contractors have been included into a stimulus package. Um, Drew Wilder said, good morning and thank you all for doing this. Thank you, Drew, for joining us this morning. Can we talk about the SBA just for a second? Sure. Uh, uh, there's and two sets to be able to get unemployment. Yes. And that's, uh, that's one of the interesting things is that, uh, uh, the uh, first off, we'll start with it. We'll start with the one that that uh, that people that independent contractors can do today. OK, today's uh, April the 10th, uh, and that's the SBA 7A program. It's called the Paycheck Protection Program. And that's where uh, a, an independent contractor can get an SBA loan. It's an eight week loan. And what it will do is it will cover your cost, uh, your your um, basically your uh, your workability, uh, for, uh, for a small business, for a, for, a, uh, an S corp real estate company, let's just say an LLC real estate company, a, a, a triple P will cover everything from your salaries, wages, uh, your, your, uh, payment for leaves, anything you're paying your staff, uh, it will cover, it also covers rents. It covers, uh, uh yeah, we're going to be covered. <laughs> We might get something out of this. You never know. Uh, but it but it covers uh, things that to make the business run. All right. So I'm going to start at a, I'm start at it on an LLC level, and then we're working at independent contractor level. And so what this loan does is that it gives you the ability to cover uh, basically eight weeks worth of your expenses. Now, now granted, those expenses had to be in place February the fifteenth. Right. So you can't go out and hire somebody now and expect to get a. a an SBA loan to cover them. That's not going to happen. But uh, but one thing you can do though is you take those expenses. That's rent. That's health insurance. That's uh, salaries, and uh, you average. You get a monthly average of those, and then you get two point five times that average. So uh, basically, uh, you take you take your monthly, multiply it times two point five, and that will give you your your projected loan amount. Now, to get a 7A loan, SBA 7A loan, you have to direct communicate directly with your lender. This does not go through SBA.gov. You have to go directly to your lender. And um, uh, depending on your lender, they may or may not be an SBA, uh, like the bank, whoever you have your business account with, they may or may not be an SBA uh, lender, small business administration lender. But uh, most banks, BBVA, Regions, Wells Fargo, a lot of your bigger banks are using portals to get people's information. Uh, and it, then it depends on your bank. Some banks are, uh, since they've extended the uh, the tax filing deadline, will take 2018 taxes. Some of them are taking only taking 2019. So, you know, you may have to go quick fi quick file some taxes in a hurry. <laughs> yeah, I bet a lot of people will. <laughs> a lot of people are quick filing some taxes in a hurry is what's occurring. <laughs> uh, but one of the things about it, though, is, is that that's dealt with at the bank level. Now, the banks are... Uh, the banks go into this knowing they are going to be backed by SBA. So the lending thought processes are a little, I won't say they're more relaxed, but they're giving a lot more optimism to them. Uh, but now here's what happens is, is that those loans are calculated over a two year loan. And right now the interest is capped at 1%. 
Now, I don't know anywhere you can get a loan for a couple of years at 1%. Uh, now, here's what happens. If you, for all the monies coming out of this SBA loan, the 7A loan, that are, uh, that are paid towards salaries, if, when you document and show that you paid your employees through this time, those are, that's forgivable. You don't pay those back. So the only thing you're going to pay back is whatever percentage of that loan you utilized for rent or utilities. Everything else that qualifies under salaries gets paid back. I mean, gets forgiven. So it's, it's a great opportunity to, uh, to give a, a lot of, especially, you know, your smaller brokerage is less than 500, by the way, SBA is less than 500 employees. Uh, but it gives your smaller brokerages the opportunity to take that breath. I mean, you know, we don't know what the next eight weeks are going to hold. I, I, I made the statement the other day. Uh, we did some statistics and everybody was like, wait, the stats are great. And I said, well, that's because March was done. Right. March was, March, March was already done. Books. April, May and June are going to be the interesting world. And so that's what that does is it carries it through uh, from the time your loan is approved, the time of the first dispersal, you have eight weeks from that clock. To, to disperse, to utilize that. And then, like I said, that's capped at 1%. Uh, and uh, you, uh, you're you able then at that point to um, to utilize that money for your salaries and things like that. That's the 7A loan. Now, they also have in place is, uh, is the disaster relief loan, the EDIL loan. Uh, that one now you guys got any y'all got any questions on the 7a process first okay so on the 7a process mm -hmm. um, and where do we where do we go to find um the application through our banks through your bank go through your bank uh to get those applications okay so um i've had michelle ask me this week i've had karen ask me this week um go to our lender to get that and you probably yeah. can find it online correct yes yes uh once you're, you notify your lender and your lender will, now there's several lenders right now that have, um, they have paused applications. And the only reason they paused applications was not a money issue. It was more of a, we got way too many folks applying issue. So it's a more of a processing issue. Uh, and that's the interesting thing is that, you know, the projected or initial turnaround on this was seven days. And that's not going to happen. They've got way the, these banks are over they're 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 way past uh, going to be able to do it in seven days, which is which is understandable. Right. Um, so you just you know you just have to make sure you get in what you want to do, and this goes for our for our independent contractors that can start doing this today. Now, independent contractor world, you're going to need your 1099. You're going to need your 1099, and then you're going to need you did simple math, simple you know divide it by 12, multiply it times 2.5. But understand that one of the things is, is that if, if that money is an independent contractor, and this is what uh, a lot of the programs are trying to figure out, is what if you have closings during that time and your closings exceed the amount of that FBA monthly projection? You know, how does that work out? And that's one of the things they're trying to work through for the independent contractors. But I will tell you this, uh, whether or not you think you want to have a, one of those loans, if you're an independent contractor, today's the day you get to open up yours. Apply for it anyway. Doesn't it doesn't cost you anything? There's no collateral required. There's no uh, there's uh, there's uh, there's the only re you you really just go ahead and apply for it. And the reason you apply for it is you get in the stack because they take the top form first. So if you wait till Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, and let's say you're at Wells Fargo. Uh, which is a very well, a huge lender. Uh, you may be fifty thousand below. You know, you, you, you could be number fifty thousand in the stack to where you could have been five thousand today. Right. So as far as that goes, you want to make sure that uh, uh, that you kind of run through that. Uh, one of the things is on the seven A loan. I just got an update here for it. Uh, what is whatever is not forgiven under the seven A loan, uh, the interest rate will be capped at four percent. And it will be uh, it will be uh, it will be amortized over 10 years and the interest rate will not exceed 4 percent and whatever is used for salaries will be forgiven. So, again, it goes back to this is this is unusual times where you can get a business can get a loan. 
below seven or eight percent. That's that's a rare. And a ten year ammo. I mean, that's yeah. that's I mean, huge. That, and that's just on the seven A loan. I mean, you're not even talking about the uh, uh, the the uh, disaster loans. The disaster loans are uh, a whole different avenue. I mean, a disaster loan. Just so you know, a disaster loan right now. We can get into that a little bit if you want to. But the disaster loan is 30 years amortized. Right. And and it's capped at 3.75%. And it's $10,000, right? Oh, no, no, no. It can go up to, uh, the, no, there's a, actually, there's two parts to it because uh, the disaster loan, there's a $10,000, up to a $10,000 grant. Right. Okay. okay. I'm looking for my pen. Okay. <laughs> uh, the, uh, uh, the disaster loan is um, it's a low interest loan, but the thing about it is, is that the disaster loan, again, you got to be below 500 people, but uh, a disaster loan is up to $2 million. Now I granted, I'm not going to need to. Really. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, they want to they hook Dave up with 2 million. That's a whole different. Yeah, that's uh, right. uh, yeah, sign me up, baby. Sign me up. Uh, but the thing is on the, these, on the disaster loan is that you're making a good faith certification that you've been impacted. Well, I'm going to tell you now, you look around here, there's not a small business in the state of Alabama that hadn't been impacted by the coronavirus. Absolutely. So let's talk about small business independent contractor for just a second, yeah. because um, does that mean I have to have a tax ID number? Not as an independent contractor. As a small business, uh, as an LLC, uh, you would need a uh, you would need an FIEN uh, as a uh, as a um, uh, as an independent contractor. You don't because most of the times uh, in most independent contractors, which uh, every independent contractor should be a small business. Okay, uh, first and foremost, every independent contractor needs to be an LLC. And I'm not an accountant. I'm not giving accounting advice. I'm just telling you that you should be one uh, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, but uh, because most of our independent contractors use their social security numbers. So on, on the, uh, on the, seven, uh, a loans, it's, it's social security number. If you have a, if you have an FIN number, great. Utilize that one. All right. I just wanted to make sure because I know a lot of agents will be asking that, wait a minute, I can't get it because I don't have a tax ID number. So, um, uh, uh, wanted to make sure to, to clear that up. So, right. and you know, I've got, um, me personally, I've got, one, two, three, four, four businesses, I guess, with different mm -hmm. tech numbers. Um, so four different applications, by the way, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I know, right? Crazy. But um, they, it is available. Um, yes. You can actually do that for each one because yes. one, we buy Airbnb properties through, which, you know, that's taken a hit. One is a, a building company. One is um, get a real estate life. One is... Um, my real estate business. So um, just to get clear, so everybody knows, you know, why I would have so many and why, what, you know, whatever you're doing in your business, how it can work. Well, I mean, that's, that's the whole thing is that, that uh, and this is probably what, if there was, there was a good that came out of 2009 and probably one of the best goods that came out of 2009 was uh, our real estate community got a, a ton of education in 2009. Yes. <laughs> they we learned, were there, right? We were there <laughs> we, together. We were there. <laughs> uh, 2009, they learned the hard way that they were a business. Uh, right. Because in 2009, uh, when the market crashed, I had, you know, I had people come to me that said, well, well, wh how do we get unemployment? I'm like, you can't, you can't get unemployment. You're a 1099 person. Uh, so now, you know, it's you know, those world, but in 2009, then people went, well, how do I, you know, how, what happens then? Well, you got to create, you got to be a business. Every real estate professional has, should be a business. And then you should get paid. Your business should pay you. So, and that's what all of this is doing. This is, this is again, reiterating the fact that uh, one of the, one of the things that irritates me in this world, especially in the real estate world, because I came from 20 years in law enforcement. So the thing that irritates me in the real estate world is the phrase, I just want to sell houses. You know, selling houses is a byproduct of your business. <laughs> Build a business and you'll sell houses. Well, you can do that by being on a team. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. you, can do, you can sell houses if you, you want to sell houses. Uh, 
and let somebody else get gray in the process. Uh, <laughs> but uh, as I've gotten there, I say, okay. Um, but yeah, so see, the interesting thing is, is the, 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 uh, the disaster loans then are 30 years and 3.75%. And again, this is one of those that I'm going to tell you, you know, from, from a standpoint of always being prepared is that um, even if you don't need it, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and apply for this one as well. Right. Apply for both uh, because there's no prepayment penalty on the disaster loan. So let's let's look at this perfectly honest. You got you you could you could uh, create funding that you hold for six months just to make sure. Right. You don't have to spend it. You don't have to spend it. Right. And then in six or eight months, when you're sitting there going, "Okay, business is back. I'm back where I need to be. Everything's good." Pay their money back. There's no prepayment penalty. And and you're done. And the and the uh, uh, the, the, your payment on this is deferred for a year. So when you receive the, 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 the disaster relief loan, it's deferred for a year. Now, one of the things that people are misreading on something is the, uh, the $10,000, uh, uh, and just like that, the grant, $10,000 grant. Everyone's reading that as a $10,000 grant. It's not a $10,000 grant. It's up to $10,000. And it's based per employee. So if you have one employee, that's one thousand dollars. So people are people are signing up going for going. Oh, if all else fails, I get this ten thousand dollars. All right. So let's break this down to say, okay, where do they go to get the um, disaster loan application? Okay, that's at sba.gov forward slash disaster. And I am typing this so people will know. Application is at sba.gov forward slash disaster. And it will pop up. It'll pop up. Uh, 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 I think it either says coronavirus or COVID-19. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the one I took care of already. Yeah. And, uh, and all that's online. See, that's the great thing about that one is that is a, that is an online application. And then they, they go through the SBA processing on that one. And then, the SBA lender will reach out to you when it comes through processing. Now, I will tell you that um, if you click for the up to $10,000 grant, it says that it will be dispersed within three days. It will not. Yeah. Uh, it's right now they are looking at 10 to 14 days. So don't go onto your bank account every day going, it's not there, it's not there, it's not there, because it's not going to be there. Uh, and, and for personality, for certain personality types, that's going to drive them completely mad. Right. So just uh, just know that. So but on the grant, do we go to the same spot? For the which one? Sorry. Grant. For the grant. Well, the grant is actually part of the application process. Okay. While you're doing your application process, at the end of it, it will actually ask you, do would you like to receive up to a ten thousand? And you check the little box. And right. once you check the box, it puts you for the grant. All right. Now it will, it will it will assign you an admin number at the end. Uh, make sure you print that off because when they call that verification, they're not going to take your name. They're going to, you know, they'll they'll ask you your name. They'll ask you uh, some some uh, clarifying information. Then they're going to know that 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 number, and you need to have it. Here's mine. There you go. That's what it looks like. <laughs> So it is, it's, uh, it's, this is, this is an unusual situation in our world where uh, the real estate industry, you know, has never had this opportunity. Now, granted, there's, there's, there's the caveat to it. We have to make sure that we do it the right way and not sit here and, and start slamming SBA because I, you know, I haven't heard from you and, and why haven't I heard from you? Well, You've, you're about another hundred thousand people in there, so that's probably one of the biggest things to make sure of is that you you do understand that this is a time-consuming uh, process. And such the, a blessing that yeah, such oh, yeah. we don't need to complain about it at all. Um, no, no, that's, that's you know that's probably the biggest thing. But Gucky and I have spoke about this uh, here recently, especially on the. Uh, on the whole process, I'm talking about everything from 
the industry as a whole right now, how we're, how we're approaching things. Uh, and you know, one of the last videos I did for the association, uh, I made the statement that we need to be humble, you know, because we're still getting to work and there's a lot of folks out there not. Right. And so, you know, this is, this is another one of those examples of, uh, if you have, if you've been economically impacted by this scenario, here's your chance. But by the same token, let's not try to rob the bank in the process, but make sure that you cover yourself in the process. Well, and I appreciated you saying that and also saying, so let's make sure that uh, we're doing things the right way so that we're not taking advantage of the situation. Exactly. But we had, uh, it was very interesting though, when this came out, uh, oh, one of the new things now, and I don't know if you've had any, anyone do this or not, uh, independent contractors can now apply for unemployment through the state of Alabama. Okay. And so, talk, yeah, tell us about that. That is a whole different animal. <laughs> uh, I love the state of Alabama. I love every state in the, in the United States. None of them are prepared for this one. Every piece of documentation in the state of Alabama has employer written on it. Right. We don't employ people. We don't employ agents. They're independent contractors. There is a contract involved. So this will be a very clumsy process. Uh, you know, uh, one of the things is, is that it's the other reason for the LLC and you should pay yourself a salary is that this comes into play. Uh, and plus, you know, go today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't like him to begin with and I fired him. You know? I myself off. <laughs> uh, but the interesting thing is, is that where the, where the gray area is going to come into play on this is if we have people apply for unemployment, which, you know, granted, if you are if you are impacted, you do what you need to do to protect your family, first and foremost. But uh, the questions that the state is going to have to weed through is now uh, uh, Gusty, Gusty applied for unemployment, we'll say. And then at the end of this month, Gusty had a closing. Is Gusty employed or unemployed? How does that impact Gusty's employment? Mm. I mean, I'm, you know, it, it's one of the. Is it a severance? <laughs> <laughs> well, my, mine would be, you know, that money was earned prior to me becoming unemployed, you know. Right. Uh, but at the same time, it is it is uh, it's very interesting. The, uh, the the way it's all working out, it's it's, you know, the states are having to work through this. Uh, uh, little by little. And uh, one of the interesting things is, is that it's, it's new ground for them. So uh, I'll give you another piece of advice, which is do not call the Alabama department of labor and jump up and down because they hadn't processed your application. They're sitting down there wondering how to process you right now. I'm sure they are. In fact, Ron Mason has got a question. He said, how does the independent contractor unemployment work if you have multiple companies and get paid from one, but are an independent contractor as a real estate agent? Uh, if you're still working for the company that you're getting paid for, as in you haven't laid yourself off, uh, which is very dangerous, by the way, all kidding aside, if you own the LLC and you're drawing a salary and you figure the best way to save money is to lay yourself off, don't think that the Department of Labor is not going to come look at you. Right. Because they're going to look. They're, 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 it may not be this week and it may be six months from now, but if the Secretary of State's office calls, you'll know why. Uh, or the Attorney General's office. Uh the, the flip side of it is, as Ron was saying, how does the unemployment, uh, independent contractor unemployment work if you have multiple companies? Uh, the interesting part of it is going to be is that the, uh, you, you're only one person to be unemployed. So you're not going to be able to pull unemployment from three different companies. That's not the way unemployment works. It's, it's that one avenue. Uh, and there are stipulations. Uh, one thing people that I don't think understand is that if they've never been on unemployment, is that you're required to go look for a job. So when you, when you, when, 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 when David lays himself off cause he's tired of dealing with him, uh, that means old Dave's got to go look for a job. And that, you know, so that sets up a whole big domino effect that, that we have to be very careful on because like I said, this is, this is, uh, you know, the department of the national, the U S department of labor has put out some guidelines for it. 
that are changing. I mean, the uh, the SBA, just give you an example of how, how much things are changing right now. Uh, the SBA 7A was supposed to launch out on uh, April the 3rd. And on April the 2nd, they were changing guidelines. So as the uh, as the independent contractor unemployment starts changing, you can you can bet there's going to be interesting guidelines come out. There's going to have to be. And uh, we have to expect that and be OK with that. Nobody yeah. has, has ever gone through this situation. So um, we all have to um, give everybody a little grace as uh, everything has been, you know, as our leaders are figuring these things out. And um, Zach actually posted a link to um, unemployment um, uh, and uh, insurance link um, yep. that concerns the the um, the virus. So um, we've got those avenues. Um, what else, David? What else do we need to look at and, and do to take care of ourselves? Uh, a few things. Um, something that uh, that I really am stressing. Uh, we've stressed it here at the company and we've stressed it through the association world is limiting and exposure of an industry. All right. I know that sounds, that sounds crazy coming from people who, you know, we're all in real estate because we, we love people. We're all people, people, you know, if you talk to a realtor, they're all people, people. And, and, and uh, so the, the bad part of it is though, is we have a tendency to be two people, people. And when I say that uh, limiting the exposure of not only yourself, but your industry is, is twofold. One, uh, if you're showing properties, only show it to the people that are going to write the contract. You know, this is not the, this is not the time to have mom, dad, and the grandparents go see the house before the kids buy it. That's just not going to happen. Uh, uh, you right now we have to be careful as an industry. You know, I tell people all the time during the safety classes that, uh, you have to assume you're always being, uh, videotaped, you know, you always, and that's old school videotape. Now you're just like video. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. VHS. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we, we all must assume we're always on video with ring doorbells, with, with interior video cameras, things of that nature. Now I want you to now think of yourself as a seller who keeps your house on the market during this time. And you're, your uh, ADT goes off and you look on your phone and there comes a realtor and six people walking through your house, ranging in ages from 28 to 68. And you're wondering why they all in there. That's the problem that we have to make sure we don't perpetrate. That's the reason we have to make sure that we kind of bring this in as tight as possible. The other thing is perception. And, and I can't stress enough. Uh, perception is reality. Uh, especially, uh, like I said, I was in law enforcement for 20 years and, and uh, there was, there was the great myth of the city of Hoover. And that great myth was at Christmas time, there were people that would lay underneath cars and cut your, your, your ankles to rob you. That was the great myth at the Galleria. It wasn't real, but perception being reality, everybody thought that's what was occurring. I used so, to hear that all the time. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's like that. So here's what happens is, is that now social media is what it is. And we as an industry need to um, be a little bit more sensitive to social media. Uh, I, I made this statement the other day during the video that, you know, we've got people in our communities that aren't working right now. They don't know whether they're going to buy, you know, they don't know what their world is going to be doing. Right. And, and when we have a closing, even though I believe in celebrating closing, the, the picture of everybody standing together with a sold sign is not a good image for our industry right now. Right. And so we have to be careful of that. But I also think that, that we also have the opportunity today to do something that we've never done before. And that is, you know, in 2005, one of the interesting things about 2005 was that's when Zillow was created. And Zillow was created because the real estate industry drug its feet. All right. 2009 market crashes, real estate professionals learned a little bit in 2009. I think we all did. Now we're in 2020 and here's another opportunity. All the technology in the world, 
And we have this opportunity now, virtual open houses. We have the opportunity to, to give someone a tour of a home with them not being there. We have all of this available to us, and now we need to start utilizing it. Uh, we need to make sure that we can show the community that we can adapt to this scenario and still serve them in the way we need to serve them. Uh, one of the things that I've seen is, uh, is, is interesting information. Uh, everyone's becoming an expert in certain things and everybody's becoming a doctor. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, if it was on, if it's on, if it's on the internet, it's gotta be true. Um, but the interesting things is, is that we are, uh, uh, we're giving, we're giving gray advice and we're not giving great advice. Uh, one of the things I see where uh, Donna had typed in for those that are doing virtual tours and buyer wants to put a contract on a house, are they able to get out of the contract if there are things that they weren't able to see during the virtual showing? Well, you know, that's what, that's the gray advice. Uh, um, the gray advice says yes, because you still have inspections and things of that nature to go through. Uh, one of the interesting things is, is the people, seeing houses through video is not new. Uh, if you've ever worked with military people, uh, uh, we've, I mean, we've been in this business 20 years and military people buy houses all the time, mm -hmm. sight unseen. And they, the stipulation is always in there that, you know, at final walk, you know, at a certain point in time. But it, what, one of the key things on virtual is, is you have to be very good at it. Uh, and I think that's where the honesty part comes into play as well. If it has an ugly room, you need to show the ugly room. Yes. Uh, so, what, so what do you mean by, by you got to be really good at it? Uh, you've you've got to you've got to show a virtual tour just as you would a, a regular tour, which means you show them the room. You show them. Uh, I have a dear friend of mine that lives in a very small town in South Alabama and his house, if he stands on his front porch and looks out, there's his front yard, there's a street and on the other side of the streets, the railroad tracks. Now he loves his house. He's not moving anywhere, but when he bought his house, before he pulled up in the yard for his walk for his first showing, he never knew the railroad tracks were there. Right. Nobody, nobody mentions the railroad tracks. Right. So on the, on a virtual tour nowadays, we have to be willing to go. And this is the view from the front porch, you know, and, and they get to see that because they're not able to see that. So if we only keep it to the beautiful kitchen and the great and refinished bathrooms, we're not able to get that aspect of it. So we have to be able to show them the whole house. That's what I mean by, by being great at it. We have to be able to show them what the basement looks like, what the backyard looks like, what the backyard from the back of the fence looking to the back of the house looks like. Everything has to be as if, because we are their eyes. And I think that's where a lot of, where 3D, uh, where 3D photography comes into play, where like something like a Matterport or something like that, where you can walk around the house, that comes into play. And then when you back that up with live video, or, or true video, then you, you give someone a better sense of the house. Well, I would want them to know every, and I don't want to say flaw, but that's the best word I can come up with. Everything about that house, good and bad, um, because I would not want my seller entering into something that um, could fall apart later and take away from uh, market time. So uh, uh, I, I feel like it's our duty um, our fiduciary duty to our seller to make sure that every buyer does see everything possible and that they need to make a good decision about that house. Oh, exactly. I mean, that's probably the, one of the things that, um, you know, many years ago we had room measurements. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. Put in the measurements of the rooms, uh, pro and con good and bad. It's, it's one of those type of things, but imagine now if you actually had room measurements, and then with the technology we have available for photography and video, you could actually look at the floor plan and go, okay, 
That's not with a wide angle zoom lens. This is, this is what the room looks like. This is the size of the room. And it would be more detailed information. Because I think that's where for the next, uh, for the next month or so, that's where detail really comes into play. And you're right. You don't want them walking up there on, uh, let's say that everybody gets to start moving around on May the 15th. You don't, you don't want them pulling up on May the 15th going, oh, I thought this was a lot bigger than what it looked. Right. Well, and we can easily fill those in in MLS today. I mean, the to measure a room electronically is so easy. And I think it's about $30 for the instrument that you can buy at Home Depot, which is still open. Um, <clears throat> and you can, you know, I carry one in my car. Thanks yep. to my husband. And, uh, you know, it's so much easier than getting a tape out oh, yeah. in one hand and making sure it's, you know, at the right angle. Um, so uh, I, we've gotten, um, we've gotten a little lazy and uh, it's time for us to say, all right, right now we need to leave um, uh, no doubt in the mind of the buyer. Exactly. I mean, we, we, and I don't know it was lazy. Uh, I would go, we are a lot more comfortable than we used to be. Uh, technology has created a comfort space uh, everywhere in this world, but especially in the real estate industry, we are very comfortable with uh, fantastic photography. We are very comfortable with drone footage. We are very comfortable with everything that makes, we are very comfortable with the, uh, with the uh, correctly enhanced blue sky in every listing. <laughs> and the, the fireplace. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, we are very comfortable with, with that aspect of it. Well, we want to make and sure everyone's good. So. That we need to be a little uncomfortable right now in the fact that we need to make sure that we leave no doubt that we do present everything as it should be. Like you said, uh, uh, it's the ugly spot. You know, it's the, it's the, uh, the, the look of the kitchen that says that, well, it's not as large as it seems, you know, like when you open the, when you open the oven, you're not crossing over to the other side of the kitchen, that aspect of it. <laughs> so, uh, well, and that comes with expectations for our sellers too. Hey, sellers, you know, this is the time we, we want to highlight and make sure your property is so attractive. But um, in order for us to make sure we have only the serious um, people in here, this is the time that we want to highlight some of those flaws and every house has them. Uh, oh. But the beauty of it is, is that there are people who can't sleep at night unless they hear the train um, and they're going to still choose the house. Mm -hmm. Right. People will still move forward with whatever property it is. Um, that's the beauty of it. Exactly. And, and, and it's, it's the, it's the overall aspect of if we present it the way it is, just as if you were walking up and walking through the front door, then the community as a whole looks at you and says, no matter what, I'm going to get a straight answer. And, and I'm going to get it, whether, you know, uh, I, I make this statement all the time. You can ask me the question as long as you are prepared for the answer. <laughs> and and that's, that's what we've got to be right now. We've got to be those people that are willing to give the answer. I mean, you know, I've had people ask all the time. Uh, you know, I, uh, of course, you know, Peggy will tell you I don't sell houses anymore. And, uh, you know, I'm here in the office. But, uh, but one of the interesting things, though, is that, uh, you know, I've walked into a house before with her and they go, well, well, this is our accent wall and it's dark purple. What do you think about it? And I have to leave the house. You know, I can't be the, I can't be the one that, that you know, because I'll look at you and go, yeah, you need to paint that. That needs to be beige. Just go ahead and throw the beige on it. Uh, and Peg does it a whole lot more, but she does it a lot better than I do. It'll wind up beige, but it's not like I just look at it and go, no, uh -oh. <laughs> Every now and then, you know, we may need a little bit more now right now. Hey, I was going to uh, ask, David, what, um, based on everything that, you know, people are adapting right now to, um, with everything that we got going on, what do you think is going to stick after all this is, after, after the coronavirus, what is going to stick right now? Uh, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting because of, 
realtors have short memories. We, we truly do have short memories. I, uh, uh, you know, besides, I just want to sell houses phrases. Um, there's also the phrase that, that I think it's overused in times like this, and that's getting back to basics. Okay. Everybody's now, if you, if every, every site you go around that is real estate related, they all want you to get back to basics. Well, you never should have left the basics to begin with. <laughs> if you keep doing the basics, you're going to be okay. Uh, but I think what sticks this go round will be, uh, I think the technology is going to stick a little more. I think the value of video is going to stick a little more. Uh, when I say that, you know, uh, the, the photography game increased a lot post 2009. You got better photography. You got better. You got the drone photography. You got all photography. But we are in a video age. I mean, if you think about it right now, we're sitting and doing something that five years ago would have been unusual. Mm -hmm. We're doing this every day now. I mean, uh, uh, we are at the point now that, that this is becoming the norm. And I think this will stick more. It will. I think it'll stick more, especially on properties that, uh, that maybe uh, the seller doesn't want to leave the house on a Saturday or Sunday. But they will uh, uh, they'll let you come in on Thursday afternoon and do a video to post on Sunday to be a video open house aspect of it, things of that nature. So I think video is going to stick. I think another lesson that will stick and I hope this sticks is that more of our industry have to start running it like a business. More of our industry has to start being a business. You know, I don't care if you're if you're a one person agent working for a company and all you're doing is your real estate sales, you need to be that business and you need to really start treating it as a business. Uh, one of the things that I was taught years ago was that uh, when you, when you run your business, you need at least four to six months of liquid reserves sitting in the bank at all times. And we, during good times, we all, we all kind of, fudge that number because we want to go do something or we want to give ourselves a raise that month, you know, um, <laughs> I get but, a bonus. Yeah, I got a bonus this month. But the thing is, is that we all need that. We all need to be like a business because your major corporations have liquid funds. All of your big businesses hold reserves. That's the reason they're called reserves. And if we could do one thing in this industry coming out the other side of it is, is that we need to educate our real estate professionals, not only to be that they are more business professional than they've been in the past, but they need to be a business. Everybody here needs, that's the one thing that the Alabama real estate commission did years ago was allow you to be an LLC so that you could, so that you could be paid that way. So this is the best time to become that business. So that would be me. I, to me, it's, it's from an industry standpoint, we have, we have to make sure that we come out of this better educated. And I think we are better educated. We just have to remember it. And then, and in order to remember it, it has to be driven home on the regular. I, I think one thing that we're going to see, um, I believe you're going to see more buyers open the video conferencing. Um, uh, we've started doing um, uh, buyer consultations through, um, through zoom. Uh, we've done some listing consultations uh, so I think more people are going to be open to it. I think that uh, you're going to see even showings are going to be a little bit different. I think that um, uh, people are going to be a little bit more precautious um, um, or a little bit more cautious about, you know, how many people are in their house at a certain time. So I think we're going to see some things that it, it'll, it'll take a while for this to kind of, you know, people to forget this. So, yeah. um, and even, you know, I, I see definitely more people open to making an offer just by seeing the house on video or a FaceTime or a Zoom or anything like that. So it's going to be interesting to see how the agents are going to, you know, continue to adapt and, and stick with the adapt, ad, adaptations right now and continue to stick with it. And I think communication, too. I think our communication yeah. as an industry is getting better. 
um, through this because we're, we're having to communicate instead of seeing each other at an office, we're having to have this conversation. Well, I think that the, you're right. I, am I, you slowed a zoom, a FaceTime, anything like that. Yes. I think, uh, I think one of the Go biggest ahead. impacts we're going to have coming out of it is zoom. Now, granted, I wish I had invested in them five years ago when they first opened up, that'd have been a big payday now. Uh, but, uh, but, the your typical buyer consultation where you would have it in your office uh i think i think video buyer consultations takes it to another level now you're at that point of of they get to see the face they get to hear the voice but they also don't have to come into the office and and that's the first step like i said in 2009 video became uh, uh photography became uh, a lot better level. Now video's taking that over. And I think one of the adaptations that we need uh, through this is, uh, and I think, I think our MLS is actually working on it now, is there should be a way, there should be two separate tabs. There should be an open house tab and then there should be a virtual open house tab to where you can always have video running about properties. Cause I really believe that, and when I say video, I'm not talking about a slideshow. I'm talking about like you guys, like you guys are talking about. I'm talking about, you know, actual moving video, uh, because pictures look great, but video gives a good representation of the size of a room. And so, uh, so I think that that's that's. I hope that sticks. I really do hope that sticks. Well, I'm so excited that you joined us here today. We went over some really good information, um, and uh, just uh, recapping. Um, we've got the um, uh, SBA 7A loan um, that you go through your lender to um, apply for. We've got the disaster loan that um, you apply for right on SBA.gov. Um, yep. We've got, and you will need your 1099s. Um, uh, you can uh, apply for unemployment and um, the paycheck protection. Yes, the paycheck protection is the, is the 7A. That's the forgivable. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's an eight week program. It's forgivable. Uh, as long as the money spent on salaries are forgivable, it's put like that. Your rent's not going to be forgiven, but you will be able to, you know, it'll be okay. You'll be able to deal with it. Uh, but it, whether or not you need it, uh, my advice is, is to apply for it because it runs through June the 30th. And, uh, one of the things that you want to make sure of is that, uh, like I said earlier, we, our impact wasn't seen in March. Our impact will be seeing April, May, and June, and we just need to make sure that that we are prepared for April, May, and June. Well, what can we do um, uh, as an association to support um, you as president? Uh, uh, don't cut my tires. Um, <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's the great thing about it is we have phenomenal staff at the association. And they are they are working daily to make sure, and they they hear from me every day. Unfortunately, uh, that was not the goal this year. The goal this year was not for them to hear from me every day, but they have heard from me every day. Uh, but as far as what the membership can do, it's pretty simple. Uh, continue to be the the class professionals that you are, and continue to can raise that bar, and continue to be a little humble especially for the next, you know, like I said the other day, when we come out the other side of this, you can post all you want to on social media. But right now, as we go toward the end of April and, you know, and it's already the, the 10th of April. So we'll start having closings in another five days and they'll be ramping up through the end of the year to the end of the month. Uh, let's not post a lot of parking lot pictures with everybody holding signs and being two feet away from each other. Uh, let's, let's wait and do that a little bit later because it's not that I'm not proud that everyone is, is having this go, that this is, that this is going because I am, I am tremendously proud of our membership and how they've worked through this scenario. Uh, but my, my bigger concern is what it looked like to that person in a retail sales that is sitting at home and still hasn't got the unemployment check yet. So for me, it's continue to do what you do and do it to the level that you've been doing it and just kind of be a little gracious, a little more gracious in the process. And know, and know that every day uh, we're, we're fighting every day to make sure we stay essential through everything. 
and that's going to be our goal and continue to be our goal. Well, um, I shared this yesterday. I've gotten two phone calls this this week about what can you do to stop making, what can you do to tell agents to stop making us as an industry look like selfish, um, greedy people by all the posts that we're doing on social media, kind of rubbing it in people's faces. And uh, so it's a real thing that you're asking as far as being humble. It's, um, it is a blessing. It's a gift um, that we've been given uh, to choose to work. We're not all choosing to work right now. We are not all, we're not choosing to have meetings right now. Not everybody is doing that. Um, uh, so it, what you're saying is real. And I guess I just really want to acknowledge that because yeah, I've had two emotional phone calls, um, people fired up and passionate about it, especially from a perspective of the medical community that, right. um, you know, they're working on the front lines to help everybody. And we're out there bragging about being essential. And I, I personally have made a couple of jokes about it myself, like two essentials hanging out. <laughs> after yeah. work. <laughs> but I felt bad about it after that. <laughs> well, it's just, it is truly, it's, it's, we are, we are blessed right now to be able to continue to do what we do. And people will never, uh, you guys, I, like I said, my past world, I, I remember a lot of things that correlate with this, but one of the big things is, is that you will, we will rarely be overly remembered for the good stuff we're doing right now. That, that you know, uh, at the end of the day, they're going to refer to you and tell you, well, that was your job. Your job was to sell houses. Your job was to list homes. And it is. What we will be remembered for is the post that gloat that'll be what we're remembered for because uh, I've, I have first responders in my family. You know, I've got uh, nieces that are nurses and, and my own, my own two children are, or ones in the military and one's, one's a police officer. So, you know, they're in it every day. And I think the biggest thing that I will remember is the fact that, you know, it's how my constituents looked during this, you know, were we were we out there with a sold sign showing that we got a check while somebody's you know waiting three or four weeks for their unemployment to start? And I think that that is uh, that's where we need to be. Uh, I I can't stress humble enough. We just we need to be humble. We're a proud group, and, and we should be because we've 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 made leaps and bounds and accomplishments over the last decade that 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 can't be can't couldn't have been imagined. Uh, but we also need to remember that that on the on the climb up, you might want to turn around every now and then and put your hand down and pull somebody else up with you. And uh, and I think that's where we got to be right now. That's for sure. Every day we should be that way. Every day. So well, thank you so much, Gusty. Do you have any last questions? Did you hear me? <laughs> no, I just appreciate your time. I appreciate your leadership. We've worked together on the executive committee for years. Can you hear me? Yes. Now you're back. <laughs> but I, I just say, uh, you know, I really appreciate all that you're doing. Um, you know, okay, good. There ain't my internet is just, I don't know. Uh, but I, I just want to say thanks, David. You've, um, we've been on the executive committee for years. You're doing a fantastic job as a leader of our association. And so, um, uh, I'm just uh, proud to know you and proud to call you Absolutely. friends. Um, I Thank you that. both for being past president and president. It's a job that I would never sign up for. And uh, <laughs> I know it's a tough one. <laughs> so I admire you both for doing it. And uh, thank you for your leadership and for your time today. Hey, thank you guys for having me. Everybody have a wonderful day and uh, be humble. Thank you.